and, and this is one of the suggestions I give in my technical interview talk, is uh, as a beginner, I wrote a lot of you know apps for me. Right. And um, back and back then, I would release them on um, like BBS systems. You sure. know, back then because we didn't have you know the web and stuff like that. Right. And, right. So the first big program that I consider I wrote was called um, I call it Same Same because uh, okay. it was it actually was these these words my son would say when he was a baby, <laughs> okay. and um, and what Same Same was was you know I. I work at home and, and at work and, and I didn't have an easy way to take my code from work to home to work to home. Sure. You know, and, and just there was press, no cloud. There was no none. Right, no cloud or anything and just press a button and have it properly upload. Right. right. So I wrote this program called Same Same, which did that. You know, awesome. I would define what I wanted copied onto a disk, mm -hmm. press a button, do it, go home, press a button, goes all to the right area. And I could take things back and forth because I was, you know, I didn't have source control, didn't have the cloud, didn't have sure, anything. But yeah. that's what Same Same did. And um, somehow, so I, you know, I released on BBS, you know, selling it back. I, I really got my professional start doing uh, shareware. Okay. You know, people can remember that. And um, uh, so Same Same was like the second shareware program I wrote. Right. Yeah. And, and so I put it up on BBS systems. And one day I get a call from PC Magazine somehow they picked it up wow and they reviewed it so I think it's in the <laughs> I have the magazine it's just haven't well, I looked sure at it a long do. time yeah, yeah. but I think it was the February of 95 they reviewed it and they did a good review so my orders basically shot up from 10 a month to 10 a day wow you know and uh, and my kids were little then, and but I got the whole family involved in, in keeping up with this. Because mm -hmm. back then they had the little cards you circled, and we had to send them information, and we had to send the orders out. And so <laughs> I had my kids, which were little, putting floppy disks in and out of my computer, <laughs> making the disks. You know, so your own little uh, uh, Chinese workers. Yeah. There. <laughs> then I had I had I had my wife at the time making all the envelopes for more information. And then I was doing more of the packing, shipping stuff. We were all doing it to keep up with 10 a day, yeah. which was a lot for me. Well, but that's good, you know. I mean, it's, it's a, I guess, a family affair. But, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's good because, you know, you get that interaction, you know, that you otherwise, like, oh, yeah. I, there's no way I can transfer what I'm doing right now into a normal conversation with the wife and kids. Oh, yeah, they don't but if they're But if everybody's doing something, you're mm -hmm. like, hey, you're a part of the, the process. So I think that's cool. I think and I was making money, so yeah. <laughs> my wife didn't mind. Obviously, that's a big <laughs> selling point right there. So that's, ac back. that's actually, and that even snowballed into more stuff. Like, then I got a call from... Uh, some editor at a, a mobile magazine wanted to interview me, mm -hmm. you know, and that's how I came up. During that interview is how I came up with my company name because I was, you know, talking about shareware. And I said, you know, shareware is kind of like nicheware. Right. You know, it fills right. a niche. Right. That's my company name, nicheware. Nice. You know, and yeah. it is what I've always done, but it came from that interview. I was interviewed by, I think, at least two magazines because of the PC magazine. Just Art. that one article, that exposure. That exposure, and then my, you know, orders kept going up for a while. You, so know, you they... dreamed of being a rock star, <laughs> but you're just a rock star in a different kind of way. Right. <laughs> but I did learn from that uh, that I don't like doing packaging. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure it's like if I have to do one more little. I'm... I hate that, and yeah, so yeah. what I did after that is I partnered with a company and let them do it. Mm -hmm. I wrote the program, they did the packaging, and I didn't have to worry about it. Awesome. Because I don't like to do. I'm a geek. I don't like to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the, yeah. When 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 you realize that what you're doing, and then you figure out that you're going to have to do it x many more times, and it's going to take that many more times. You start doing those calculations in your head, and you're like, nope, 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 not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. But you know, the really cool experience that that gave me, you know, doing shareware, because I did multiple things, you know, that would take too long to explain. But that was the biggest one, the mm -hmm. most popular one. Mm -hmm. And um, but what that did was introduce me very quickly to the whole development cycle. Right. But he, not that I realized I was doing it, <laughs> you know, because right. I was a beginner. Right. But, you know, I was coming up with features, you know, I was coding. Then I would deal with customers that were pissed off, right. you know, and things because, you know, they would call me and say, well, this isn't working right and blah, blah, blah. And so I kind of did the whole gamut right. of, you know, designing, coding, customers, shipping, you know, the whole thing. So yeah. very quickly I got the whole you know, a life cycle ingrained in me very right. early on. Which so, so I mean, and, and, and that's what I think a lot of educators now are, are, are missing and when they're trying to convey what, 
this industry does, what you can do with it, you know, the different opportunities and things mm -hmm. about getting in there and doing something right. and then understanding that whole life cycle that happens with an application or a product, whatever the case may be is. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's one of the things I recommend all the time to, you know, in my technical interview talk and in my classes at UCSD, you know, I tell them you need to write something. It doesn't matter what it is. I don't care what it is. It could be right. tracking the plants in your yard. You know, right. just write something. Right. You know, and find out what works, what doesn't, how to make it more efficient. Those right. kinds of things. Yeah. Because we, need, especially, you know, being being in front of me as an interviewer, mm -hmm. you know, I I need to know that you're taking your own time to do things. Right. Absolutely. And uh, so, I, I've been telling the story more this year, but that's actually how I got jobs. You know? Okay. So back in the day, every job I would go to, I would have a little plastic thing, a floppy disk. You know. And I would go into the job, and they say, well, you know, we kind of went to our program like this. I go, I have something similar to that. Plug it in, put it in, install it. Give demo, almost like a demo reel. Yeah, and it, we'd install it, it would run, I got the job every single time. That's, that's amazing. Yes. Yeah. That really is, that's good. That's, every that's single time I got the job, because I showed them I actually did something. They didn't even look at the code. Right. They just wanted to see I could bring up a program. <laughs> right, right, and, and it works. It works. Yeah. It totally works. And, and it's, like you said, similar to what, so you had a toolbox and you busted out a tool and you showed them you knew how to use it. Worked every time. Yeah. So then uh, what transitioned you on over, um, so what were you doing after? You, you said you got up with a company that took care of all the, the product and all that kind of thing mm -hmm. and the shipping and all that. What, what happened after that, after you got all these uh, extra uh, jobs and stuff? What happened from there? Actually, the, um, you know, once I realized I was good at it mm -hmm. and it was creative and I liked it. And you got greenbacks. Yeah, <laughs> actually got paid for it. I actually made General Atomics change my job title. Okay. I forced them to. They didn't want to, but I said, no, I'm not doing what you hired me for. I'm doing this now, so change my job, job title. And they did. And um, so then I left General Atomics, and I, uh, I, my first like full-time geek job, you know, was uh, you know up a little north from where I live in Carlsbad, in San Diego, and. And it was for this company that what this was really what I was hired for a lot in the beginning was okay we have a DOS program we want to move it to Windows. Gotcha. And so yeah, that conversion yeah, yeah. for sure. And, and we uh, see that now, especially with all the going other to guys, .net and things. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the 32 to the 64 and right. all those kinds of things. You know. Yeah. yeah with the so that was my first gig. Yep. You know, was was doing that and just kind of you know kept snowballing from there. Yeah. And. Uh, and especially in the beginning, I didn't stay at companies very long because, you know, the, if you move around, uh, you get more experience. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And, and you're like, no. Yeah. You need to either pay me more or I'm going to continue to move on. Plus, I was interested of, in learning. You right. Know? And, and, uh, you wanted to be a sponge. You wanted to continue to soak right. up information. Exactly. And be creative. Exactly. And, uh,